Hello everyone, we will continue the topic validations and substitutions and in the previous videos we understood the meaning of validations and substitution then we understood the meaning of two important terminologies what is application area and call up points. Now, in this video, we will start with the practical part of validation. We will take a requirement and we will achieve that requirement through validation. So, what I will do, suppose I will go to FB01 transaction code. You all know we can create an accounting document through FB01 transaction code. Now, what customer is saying, if the company code is DE11, in that case, only the document type WE is allowed, rest document types are not allowed. I will again repeat the requirement, but customer is saying, for company code DE11, the document type WE is allowed. If I will show you the meaning of WE through F4L, WE stands for goods receipt. Suppose I am choosing this document type. I am putting some posting date. If I will press enter, okay, system is not stopping. This is different. This is different thing. System is asking us to put other data, but system is allowing this WE document type. Suppose I will go for any other document type. Suppose if I will go to F, this is FB01 transaction code. If I will put document type. Now, if I will go for any other document type, suppose WA, and I will put end. Have you seen? System is not stopping us. System is accepting this document type also. Now, what customer is saying for company code DE11, for company code DE11, only that document type WE is allowed, rest document types are not allowed at all. It means we need to go for a validation that for this specific company code, only this document type is allowed. Rest document types are not allowed at all. So we will achieve this requirement through validations. Now you can connect with your functional person for the test data. In my system, I took the example of DE11 company code. You can check with your functional person that whenever you will do the practical, which particular test data you can use. Now, what we will do to achieve this particular requirement, you all know we can go for validation maintenance through which particular transaction code GGP0. It means we can create a validation, you can change a validation, you can delete a validation through which particular transaction code GGP0. So I will go to GGP0 transaction code. As of now, system is accepting all the document types for company code DE11. We will go for a validation that for company code DE11, only this document type is allowed, rest are not allowed. Now, what is the first important point? The first important point is choose the application area and call up point. That's why before this, I covered the topic application area and call up point because you need to choose. You are going for validation into which particular area you are going for validation into which particular call up point into that application area. Just see, we have so many application areas. Now you are going for validation into which particular area. We are going for validation whenever we want to create an accounting document, whenever we want to post an accounting document. It means what is the application area? Financial accounting. 
So I will simply, simply choose this. Now, after choosing the application area, you need to go for call up point because your application area is very big. Your validation at is at which particular location, at which particular position into that application area. If I will expand, we have header, we have line item, we have complete document. Just see what is our requirement if I will go to FB01 transaction code. For this company code, this only WE document type is allowed. It means this validation is at the header level. For this company code, this document type is allowed. So this validation is at the header level. It is not at the item level. As of now, we have not even put the items into this accounting document. This is your header data. Now, if you want further clarity, so you can simply, simply go to BKPF table. You all know BKPF is the table for accounting document header. If I will display, you can see if I will put document type. So this column is in the header table. So this column is at the header level. So what is the call up point where we want to put the validation? in that document header. So BKPF is the header table, BSEC is the item table. So by here itself, you can get a clarity. This is your header data. As of now, I have not even put the item data. So in the application area, FI, we are going for validation at the header level. Our call up point is at the header. Now I will go for the next point. I will choose document header. Once you choose document header, have you seen validation button becomes unable. So you can see application area FI call up point. It is anyways triple zero one. You all know every call up point has four digit number code. Now, what is next step? Select the call up point. Yes, we have selected the call up point and click on to validation creation. I will simply click on to validation creation. Now, when I will click on to validation creation, it is asking us to pass the name of the validation. You can give any name to the validation. Suppose I will say document. Suppose I will put D type. I will give the short description. Validation for document type. You can give the validation name. Yes, we provided. You have to give that description. And now, now people will ask. You are asking to put the name of the message class. But for you, message class is coming automatically. See, I already did the practical before that when I studied this topic. So add after that, what will happen whenever you will go for validation creation, the message class will appear automatically. Now, many people will ask one time I gave the name of the message class. So can I not change the name of the message class? Yes, you can change the name of the message class. Whenever you will do the practical for the first time, it will ask you to give the name of the message class. You can give the name of the message class. Next time, whenever you will go for anything, whenever you will create the validations, that message class will appear automatically. But you can change the name of the message class. Suppose I am saving this particular validation. Because I already did the practical, so message class name is coming automatically. But it is not the case that I cannot change the name of the message class. How I can change the name of the message class? You can simply, simply select the application area. And here you have the option environment change message class. But yes, if you gave the name of the message class one time, next time it will appear automatically, but you can change this. Yes. So I gave one time, that's why it appeared automatically, yes, but I can change also. Now, 
Now we will move on to next point. This part that define the prerequisite statement. Have you seen? We are getting the prerequisite. This is our this is our in this particular doc call up point. We created the validation. Now I will simply simply click on to step. I will insert a step into this particular validation. I will go for insert step. When I did the insert step, have you seen for every step we have three things prerequisite, check, and message. What we have to do? We have to go for prerequisite, we have to go for check, and we have to go for message. Now, what is the prerequisite? Prerequisite. What is our prerequisite? Our company code should always, always be DE11. If prerequisite is failed, then system will not go for next thing. Okay. What we want to do? We, whenever user is going for company code DE11, only in that case, we want to check the document type. Else we want, do not want to check at all. So it means if your prerequisite is true, if your prerequisite is fulfilled, after that only it will go for check statement. If check is failed, then it will display the message. This is the meaning. If you are going for prerequisite, define the prerequisite statement, which will determine that data should be checked or not. If prerequisite is not fulfilled, then why, why we will go for check? Suppose if I am going for any other document type, if I am not going for DE11, why, why I should go for check? Why I should display the message? If check is failed, then I will display the message. Anyways, whenever I will show the practical, you will automatically understand. Suppose I am clicking on to prerequisite. Now, what is our prerequisite? Prerequisite is company code should be DE11. So you can choose this accounting document header. Click here. Now, here find the field. What is our field? Company code. Click on to find button. Company code. I will put N. Now you can see we are able to see. Just click here. Whenever you will click here, it will show you here. Company code. You can see company code comes here. Now I will go for equal to. Anyways, we are going for single value. I will go for equal to. Now we are, as of now, we are only going for one fixed value. So I will click on to constant. Now it is asking which, which company code you want to pass. DE11. So what is our prerequisite? Our prerequisite is company code should be DE11. If company code is not DE11, why, why I should go for check? Yes, why I should go for further steps? Now I will go for check. Now what you want to check now? If company code is DE11, that document type must be, must be equal to WE. So you can simply select check. I will go for accounting document header. Now I will find the field document type. Whenever I will choose a document type, I will choose equal to. Anyways, we are only going for one fixed value, constant. So what is that fixed value? You can choose from F for help also. WE, goods receipt. W. So we put a prerequisite. Prerequisite that company code should be DE11. Then we put a check for company code DE11. That document type should be equal to WE. Now, if check is failed, if company if document type is not WE, simply I will go for message and we will give a message. Now, I can go for error message. Suppose 
this is our message class now suppose i will simply simply go for this message class and you can give a message have you seen this is your sc91 transaction code i will go to messages okay anyways the message is already there but i will show you to put a new message suppose company code for company code DE11, the document type WE is allowed. As of now, we are going for hard, we have hard coded values. I will go for save. I will go to back button. Now I will simply give the message number 00. Now I will go for save. Have you seen we have the option to give the four variables anyways as of now I will not go for this but the, to those who already know message class we can pass up to four variables to a message number four and percent anyways we will do that part later. So now what we did we gave the prerequisite company code should be DE11 if this prerequisite is successful it will go for check. Check it will go for document type WE. If document type is not WE, it means this particular check is failed. If this particular check is failed, system will simply simply go for the message and it will display this particular error message and we saved this. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we started with the practical part we took a very simple example that whenever we will create a accounting document for company code DE11, the document type WE is allowed. See, my system test data will always varies from your system test data. So you need to check with your functional person that I want to do the practical. So which test data I can use. Now, after that, we simply simply go for WGGP0 transaction code. You all know you can create a validation through CZ0 GGP0 transaction code. Then the first point we need to choose the application area. The application area is financial accounting based upon our requirement and based upon our requirement, our call up point is document header. Once you choose the call up point, it will ask you to create a validation. This validation button will become unable. Once you create a validation, then we provided the validation name. If we gave the validation description, I'll just give the description. Then we will simply, simply insert the step. Whenever you will go for step, step has three parts, prerequisite, check and message. Prerequisite means if prerequisite is precondition, if this condition is not true, why I should proceed further? So I put a prerequisite that company code should be DE11. I put a check that document type should be equal to WE. And then we gave a message. Now, when I created the validation, my message class appears automatically. Whenever you will do the practical for the first time, you need to give the message class, but it does not mean that you cannot change the message class. You can simply, simply select and you have the option to change the message class also. In the next video, we will simply, simply continue. We will learn how to activate this particular validation. So that part we will continue in the next video. So that's it in this video. Thank you.